In previous videos, we took a look at how to use the offset command in the editing group for surfaces. And we took a look at how to create a standard surface offset, offset with the replace option, and offset with expand and expand with draft. In this video, we're going to take a look at using the offset command for creating curves. So let's deselect everything. And first off, we're going to take a look at using with actual datum curves, and then we'll take a look at using model edges. Let's select a curve in the model. Here I have a curve that was created by intersection. And I can go to the offset command. And first off, I want you to note that if I go to this drop down list for the different types of offsets we can do, right now we have two options. I can offset the curve along the reference surface, and I can offset the curve normal to the reference surface. Before I show those methods, I'm going to change a config.pro option to give me a third option. If I go to File, Options, and then Configuration Editor, I can add an option. And I'll type in enable and then underscore and start typing in offset. And with the type ahead functionality, it finds the option that I want. And it's called enable offset fan curve. I'm going to change that from the default value of no. The asterisk indicates that the default value is no. I'm going to change that to a value of yes. And then click OK and OK. And I'm not going to put in my config.profile at this time, so I'll click no out of here. I've just changed my setting for the session. And now, when I select that curve and then choose offset, before when I had two options, well, now I have a third option. So we still have the ability to offset the curve along the reference surface. And here we can offset the curve normal to the reference surface. But here we have this third option to offset a given number of curves evenly between two reference curves. And that's called the fan option. I'll show that one later on. But we have our first curve selected. And you can see that we have a drag handle. And I can use that to change the offset distance and drag it in either direction along the surface. And let's drag it out over here. Maybe I want this to have a value of 40. And so every point is offset along the surface a distance of 40. If we take a look at the dashboard, here we have the reference surface collector. Here we have another place where we can change the value. And we have a flip button to change it from one side to the other. If we go to the References tab, we have collectors for the curve that we're offsetting and another collector for the reference surface. When we go to the Measurements tab, this is where we can start getting interesting. So right now, we just have one measurement that we're using, a value of 40 at every point along the curve. If you hold down the right mouse button, you can add another location point. And we could drag this, say, to the end, and it'll snap in there. So we have end with a length ratio of 0 and end with a length ratio of 1. And that way, we could change this value to maybe a distance of 20. And that way, it scales from 40 at one end down to 20 at the other. And you can add in additional locations as well. If I right-click and choose Add, here we can change this value for the length ratio. If I change that value to 0.5, now I'm changing the offset distance at that point halfway along the length of the curve. And I can make it bigger or smaller, and you can see how the offset is being changed. Let's change that to maybe a value of 50 over here. And let's add in another location point. And for the location points, I'm going to grab this and drag it over here. I actually, I actually have a datum point here in the model. And for the reference for this one, right now it's using a length ratio of 0.7. What we can do for the reference is use this point. And now you can see that the reference is located right on that datum point. And right now I'm using a value of 20. Again, I can drag it lower even, and we get the extrapolation. Let's change that to a value of 10. And I'm happy with that. So let us hit the check mark. And 
there we have our first offset curve created. All right, that's good for that one. I want to show another couple options in here. So let me hide that curve and select the original curve. This time I'll use offset from the mini toolbar. And for references over here, everything is the same as before. We're offsetting along the reference quilt and for measurements. Another option that you have is instead of measuring along the surface, uh, normal to the curve, you can actually change to use a plane as the selected reference. So for example, and this sometimes will make an imperceptible difference, but sometimes it does matter. I'm going to turn on my datum plane display and for the reference plane, let's change it over here. We can measure the distance in this plane instead for the value. And again, sometimes it's hard to tell uh, a difference if you're offsetting in the plane versus offsetting along the surface at every point normal there. In this case here, if you have very large curvature on your reference quilt, those are situations in which you will notice a difference in the value. All right, so that is good for that one. Let us hit the check mark. For the next one, let's select our original curve and do an offset. And for the offset, we're going to go to the drop down list and change the method that we're using to be normal to the reference surface. And so here you can see the value, and I can drag it out, or you could drag it to the inside. You can also do that by flipping in here whether you're dragging outside or inside. And if we take a look at the References tab, we still have the Offset Curve Collector and the Reference Quilt Collector. When you're doing the normal offset, you don't have the Measurements tab where you could have different points in different locations, but instead you can go to the Options tab and you could use a datum graph in order to control the offset. And by default right now, it is using a unit graph. In other words, every point off here is going, is going to be offset uh, the same distance long here, value of one with a scale of 28.69, which corresponds to the value that we have over here. Let me change that to a value of 30 and hit the check mark. And so we've got it in there, but before I edit definition of that, I'm going to show you that I have a datum graph in the model. Let's edit definition and hit the check mark out of here. And so here I have a simple datum graph. In another video on variable section sweeps, I showed how to create datum graphs, but you just drop in a sketch or coordinate system. I threw in a few center lines for reference, and basically you're making a curve that goes over a distance from zero to one, and that is controlling the scaling of the curve. And so for example, in this case here, I'm gonna have at the beginning of the offset curve, it's going to have a scaling of 0.25, and it's going to be one or 100% at the other end. So let's see how using this datum curve affects the shape of my offset curve. So let's select this curve that we made, and from the mini toolbar, I'm going to choose Edit Definition. And from the Options tab, I can click in the Graph Collector. You could also right mouse click and hold and choose Graph from the right mouse button menu. And I'm going to select that datum graph that I just showed you. And so now if I rotate here, let's turn off our datum plane visibility. If I, oops. edit definition of the curve, you can see that the offset over here, even though I'm supposed to go a value of 30, it's only about over here. At the other end, it's all the way to a value of 30. If we go back to the Options tab, there is a Flip button here. And so now you can see that, yep, here's our offset distance of 30. And it's going all the way out over there. At the other end, it's only actually a value of 7.5 offset from the surface. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. Let's take a look at the third method that we enabled from a config.pro option, the offset with fan. So this one is a little interesting. So I'm going to select a curve and then we can go to offset from the mini toolbar. And let's go to the drop down list and choose the fan option. 
I'm going to, going to open up the References tab as well. Right now it wants me to select the second reference curve. So I'm going to select another curve that was created on that surface. And then for the measurement plane, I'm going to use the datum plane called Station. And there you see one of the curves that was created in there. And you can change that number. So for example, if I crank that up to a value of 5, now we end up getting five curves created in our fan. So you see, there you see how they are created and there we have them and they're all located within the same feature. Lastly, let's take a look at offsetting model edges. So I'm going to select an edge over here. Let me use the shift key just to get a from to chain and from the mini toolbar we can choose offset and here I have a drag handle and you can see how I'm offsetting the curve along the surface and I can drag it the other way if I want to offset along the other surface. You can notice how it starts getting deformed as we go along there. And so we have our numerical value and just like before we have a flip button for choosing which side we want it to go on. From the references tab all you have is a collector for the boundary edge. On the measurements tab here we have a single distance value, but just like we did with offsetting a curve, you can right click and choose add if you want to have different offsets at different values. And right now we've got our collector on here. We can drag it to the other portion of the surface and drag it to the other end. And that way if we want to have different values at, on each side, we can change that. And for the different values in here, uh, you also have the distance type. So right now it's measuring normal to the edge, or you could measure the distance along the edge. And again, that can make a difference. Uh, basically, are you measuring a straight line distance or are you measuring uh, normal to the edge? So again, it can end up changing the geometry. So here you see offsetting value of 11.94, normal to the edge at that location, but change it to along the edge, and now it's measuring here in this direction. The last distance option for the offset is a little weird. I'll be honest, I don't quite understand it, but let, I, let me select this edge over here, and I'm going to choose to offset it. And for the measurements, Rather than using a distance normal to the edge, if we choose two vertex, you'll notice that the distance gets automatically selected and grayed out. You can't change it. And here we see the resulting curve if we're going to offset this edge all the way to this vertex over here. Hit the check mark, and there you see the end result. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolwindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.